Welcome, I'm Stephanie Townsend Ayala, your video host for the El Paso Elder Care Channel, and I'm an El Paso Elder Care Attorney. Today, I'm speaking with the administrator of two adult daycare centers, Mi Pueblo, as well as Club de Amistad Adult Daycare Centers, Claudia Garcia. Welcome, Claudia. Thank you for having us. Thank you. So what do your what services does your adult daycare center provide? And when I think about adult daycare, uh, I wonder, are you talking about people who are very ill and, and don't have anybody to care for them in the daytime? Uh, no, not at all. Um, not very ill. Our centers are for people who are still active, uh, who just need a place to go during the day so that they're not alone. Many times it's the parents of working adults so that they're not home alone during the day while the adult children uh, are off at work. Uh, they come to us. Mm -hmm. and so uh, it's almost like an, a recreation center for adults. And, and so uh, who would qualify for that? Um, we don't accept Medicaid. Most of the people who are there uh, are there with Medicaid. But we also have private pay uh, people who attend. We have um, uh, long-term care insurance. So, oh, so there are ways for to cover it that yes. it's not a financial burden. No. And so how many serv how many people do you provide services? And, and can, describe for me the type of person who would need your services. Uh, well, we we are we have two centers. Uh, like you said, we have one in Horizon City, Club de Amistad, Adult Daycare, and one in Socorro, Mi Pueblo Adult Daycare. Uh, the one in Socorro is the largest adult daycare in the county. The the people who go there usually tend to live alone. They are um, maybe they're couples, but they're or, or they're by themselves. And this is a wonderful place to go because when you're on an older person lives alone, they they're not. They tend to be depressed mm -hmm. or they're lonely. And when they're sad or there's depression involved, they're less likely to take care of chronic illnesses such as diabetes, hypertension, and so then their um, illnesses are out of control. They have to be going to the hospital more frequently. So uh, these centers are a wonderful place for people to go make friends, stay active, and in the meantime, and and, and in turn, they're, they're going to make friendships they're less likely to be depressed and more likely to have any chronic illness in control. That means less visits to the hospitals and, and in return everybody um, benefits. That's amazing and I, and I think that one of the toughest things for our community mm -hmm. in southern New Mexico as well as West Texas is transportation. Absolutely. We have <laughs> no quality transportation through the counties. Mm -hmm. And so that keeps a lot of people isolated. How can you help in that way? Well, I'm, I'm glad you asked because we do provide transportation. We pick up people at their homes, uh, and then we, at the end of the day, we take them back home. So if there are uh, people who don't have adult seniors who don't have transportation to get to our centers, we pick them up. In addition, some of the activities, um, we take them to doctor's appointments or, or stores. We we take them so that they don't have to worry about, well, how am I going to get to the doctor or how am I going to get to uh, the store to buy my groceries? Oh, so, so you provide, provide medical that, services as that, well. That type. Yes, um, um, medical services. We have uh, staff, uh, nurse, nurses on staff, oh, wow. and, uh, and so they're under the guidance of the doctor. So every client there um, is under the guidance of, uh, of a doctor, not necessarily, but, but most of them. and. Um, and so whatever the doctor, the doctor asks, you know, check them once a month, their hypertension. We do that. But if they just happen to feel sick that day, we can go. It's like being in a, in a school. They can go to the nurse's office. Oh, that's <laughs> and so, amazing. And they get checked. And uh, immediately we can communicate. It's a lot easier for us to call their doctor's offices, get in touch. This client needs to be seen right away or, or let's help you make appointments and so on. Well, in my, in my years in working in this area, uh, I know that there's probably well over 100,000 El Pasoans who could use your services today, I mm, bet. Absolutely. I know there's such a need. There's such a need. Uh, there is a stigma among elderly that, or, or older, I don't like using the word elderly because we have so many. our wise folks? Our wise folks, <laughs> yes, because we do actually have so many clients that are not 
older, older. They're they're actually in their early 60s and in, uh, in their uh, early 70s. So that, um, and they're very active. And so mm. uh, there is a stigma that you know they have to. Um, uh, have you dementia know, have dementia, or, but not mm -hmm. really. You know, we have uh, quite a few people there that take part in activities. Uh, tell me some of the activities. Okay, so we have um, we have ballet folklorico in both our centers, oh, and so that's and the l ladies they just they love participating in you know, the dance dances. is so yes. good for them, healthy too, it keeps them active. Uh, arts and crafts, we have painting, and so we have some of our employees, we try to hire talented employees that can offer something in return, so when we hire qualified staff, we look at what are some of the, the talents that they have, so um, we we have um, on our staff people who know how to paint on oil, on canvas oil, wow. yes, and so, uh, so they, they teach the classes, we have wood shop, we have, and surprisingly, it's most of most of the people in our woodshop are women. I love woodshop. And so it's, it's interesting <laughs> and it's fun. Um, we have also uh, music. So we hire a music Musicians. teacher. Uh -huh. So we have choir. We also uh, connect with outside agencies such as El Paso Public Library. So they book, bring the bookmobile mm -hmm. uh, and their computer van, so mm -hmm. technology. So they they can learn how to use computers and. And, and link, you know, to some of that technology. So that's so different from what you said, like the stigma or the typical uh, idea of an adult daycare center. Uh, mm -hmm. That's like a totally opposite of what some people think. Absolutely, we try to make it. Um, we try to make it a fun place to go. Uh, my mother, who is the owner of both of the, the centers, she is a nurse. Uh, oh. She has a master's in nursing, and because she she has over 40 years experience in nursing, she really believes in the holistic care of our clients. And so, mm. she, it's not just the physical and just having a place to go and play bingo, you know. Because I think that's what. Although bingo is an important part of it. Absolutely, <laughs> and when we don't, let me tell you, when oh, we don't no. play bingo. <laughs> And they go crazy. They're like, "Where's that bingo?" But so we we designate a small time slot for the bingo, you know. But um, but you know, it's not just about the physical aspect. We really look at their emotional yeah, and even their spiritual, mm -hmm. uh, because if maybe if their spirit they don't feel complete uh, or fulfilled, you know, they they don't take care of the other parts, you know, the physical, or it could lead into depression. So we really. We really um, are concerned with the whole person, and so that's why we try to offer a variety of activities and and look for our staff too. I'm really part of our staff, you know, the the qualified staff that that we have. That's amazing. And um, and do you work with other community agencies at all? Absolutely. Um, we help connect uh, our clients uh, with. Medical supplies, for example, if somebody's needing um, handles in the restroom or maybe even diabetic shoes. So we work with uh, medical supply companies. We work with, um, of course, many doctors' facilities. Uh, we also happen to have a nonprofit agency uh, that we started about five years ago, six years ago. Um, it's called Socorro Coalition for Elderly Assistance, oh my goodness. and the the main uh, function of the of, of our nonprofit is a food bank, a food pantry. Oh, how beautiful! And so uh, we do serve uh, anybody in El Paso County, and so we open up a food pantry about once a month. Oh, so we we story. provide yeah we you know we we saw a need we saw a need and. Um, and so we open the food pantry once a month, and we uh, give them a bag full of groceries uh -huh. uh, every month. So we connect them with that, and, be, and through the nonprofit, we also um, connect some of our clients with some special needs. For example, we have one particular lady who needed uh, orthopedic, uh, special orthopedic shoes, very pricey, you know, a thousand dollars, and so we were able to help connect her with an agency who donated her, her right. shoes. They made the mold for her and everything. So we work with with agencies that that can help, you know, meet some of those. Wow, well, you have educated me so much about what happens at your adult daycare center, mm -hmm. and I'm also fascinated by the story of you and your mom. Mm -hmm. You know, a locally owned business, mother absolutely, daughter absolutely. business. 
who then, not only are you helping save lives or helping uh, bring and ease lives as uh, people are passing the twilight days of okay. their lives, you're also starting a nonprofit. I mean, it's such a beautiful story about you and your mom. Absolutely. And I mean, how how did that happen? Well, you know, I give her I give her credit. Um, you know, all of this is is her her doing. Like I said, because she's a nurse by heart, that's her passion. Uh, and and in the community that we live, you know, looking at the need. Um, my degree is in public health, so it's kind of related. So we we really have focused in 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 providing the quality care that is needed um, or that they deserve, you know. And so um, when you look at your services you're providing, what do you wish that the community understood that they don't understand right now? That it, it's not a, a place where you, where, where older adults can come and just sit. Mm -hmm. We're not like that. You know, you're actively we're involved actively, in their lives, yes, in their medical we, care, in their, in their, in their, their home lives, in their home lives. We visit them at home too, when when they're absent for for a series of days, we go see what's going on. Uh, so we look at the whole person and um, and really show them that they're important, that they that they matter. And so that's, that's, so nice. that's the type that's really of care we want to provide. And, and you're, t you're touching people in the last stages of their life as they're mm -hmm. getting ready to transition. Mm -hmm. And so it's such a beautiful thing. And I just want to tell you how honored I am to meet you, Claudia Garcia, uh, the administrator of Mi Pueblo Adult Daycare and Club de Amistad mm -hmm. uh, Adult Daycare, and also the uh, administrator of the Socorro Coalition for Elderly Assistance. Mm -hmm. Can you give me a phone number? Absolutely. Uh, if anybody is interested in our services, um, you could call uh, Mi Pueblo Adult Daycare in Socorro. The number there is 915-860-8690. And Club de Amistad in Horizon City is 8915-852-5006. All right. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching this edition of El Paso Elder Care Channel. We'll see you again real soon.